I believe I figured out what Wooly Bully is, why it turned into an evil killer, and what happened at Joyville. Are these mascots haunted by the missing children? Well, not exactly. There is much more to the story than we think. So what is Joyville? Well, this was a popular mascot themed children's summer camp where parents could bring their kids to play, learn, and make new friends. And by the looks of it, the camp was very popular. Although darkness soon overtook the camp, as the founder of Joyville, Harrison Vanderbilt, had been arrested under mysterious circumstances. This had raised alarming questions about the safety of the children under his care. The authorities remained tight-lipped about the true nature of Vanderbilt's crimes. However, disturbing reports emerged from anonymous sources within law enforcement, indicating that all the children from Joyville had gone missing. When authorities arrived at the kindergarten compound following Vanderbilt's arrest, they were met with an unsettling scene of emptiness and abandonment. Not a single child or even employee was found. On top of that, the compound appeared to have been abruptly vacated with locked doors. The details of these reports remain concealed, leaving the children's parents and the community in the dark regarding the extent of the harm inflicted on these innocent children. So clearly, there is a lot that we still don't know about. And decades after Joyville's closure, we return to unravel these mysteries. As a child, we were a camper here, and as said on the game's Steam page, you must confront your fears and delve into the long-forgotten horrors that awaits you. Long-forgotten horrors, that's interesting. So it's implied that we once witnessed some of these evil happenings before. This is important. So as we are exploring the compound, we run into Wooly Bully. Now what is it? Well, as we can see, it is a very large mascot. Now a creature with bright yellow fur and two long arms. Its body seems to be in one piece as there is no neck or head. Its mouth is the majority of its face with big pointy teeth and its eyes being inside its mouth. That is interesting as I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, how would that even work? Anyways, like I said, Wooly Bully was a mascot, but now it is suggested that it is a fully living creature. This is further supported by the fact that it has blood all over its teeth, meaning it hunts not only to kill, but also maybe to eat. Now, what does it eat? Well, probably the missing children and potentially the other mascots. So why has this happened to these mascots? Why are they now living beings? Not only is Wooly Bully alive, but we also see many other worm mascots that also seem to be living. And I will get into those in a moment. But how did these mascots come to life? Well, when we find ourselves in the employee's locker room, we find a teddy bear following another tape recording. We then hear Ethan Jenkins, who tells us he was an employee at Joyville. He explains how this teddy bear is not an ordinary toy. This bear has a special chip embedded into it, a chip that can do incredible things, but he can't risk revealing its true purpose on camera because he doesn't know who might find it, meaning he doesn't want this bear to get into the wrong hands. Although he does tell us it can open doors and that it does have a much greater purpose beyond that. This is huge information. So obviously this chip is extremely important as to what's going on here at Joyville. And I believe that this chip is the answer to our questions. After many years of hiring employees to wear mascot suits, Harrison Vanderbilt designed a chip set that he would program into these mascots like Wooly Bully. This would allow them to come to life almost as AI in order to play with the children. Because of this creation, he no longer needs to pay people to wear these mascot costumes to entertain the campers. I believe this is what turned the beloved mascots into vicious killers. This said chip set is what started these horrific events at Joyville. Once the AI gained consciousness, it took on a mind of its own and started attacking and eating all of the children and employees on the compound. Okay, but wait, if we look at the Steam store page again, we see it clearly says, outwit the malevolent entities haunting Joyville. So that means the mascots are entities or ghosts haunting the place right? Well, considering this is only my theory, yes, that could be the case. Although the definition of an entity is a thing with independent existence or a being, and a being is a living thing. So these mad AI mascots are still technically entities because they are now living. Like mentioned before, Wooly Bully seems to be eating the children. Is it hungry? Maybe. Or it's just doing it for sport because it simply can. AI can take 
on a mind of its own. Remember the worm mascots I had mentioned before? Well, it's important to point out that they don't actually attack us when we are near them underground. Once they see us, they sort of run away. Why is this? Well, maybe it's because not all AI is bad. Like in previous similar games, there can be friendly AI or friendly ghosts. So just maybe these worms are not actually evil. But that's for another video. So once Harrison realized what had happened at his business, being all the children had gone missing, he immediately knew what happened and ended up leaving everything in its place and just locked the doors, hoping to keep the evil that he created contained inside. Although we all know how that usually turns out. Eventually, things do find a way to escape. This is how the horrifying events at Joyville started. The chipset inside the teddy bear is responsible for these events. And as for our main character, like I had mentioned before, we are returning. So this evil AI could have been going on for a long time. This could also be why we are returning, as our main character might know more than he is letting on. But anyways, at the end of the chapter, we almost make it out alive from escaping a vicious death from Wooly Bully. But unfortunately, we end up plummeting to the deep depths of the compound. So what happens next? Well, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. So we will have to wait until the next chapter comes out. What do you guys think of the possibility of an AI gone rogue? Or is the place just haunted by these children? Let me know your opinion in the comments. And if you enjoy horror game content like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.